Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today is just an experiment day. We're going to try to stick a couple of chunks of metal together with some welding rod, jumper cables, and car batteries. Let's get to it. I don't know if you've seen anything online like I have. Videos or even photos of uh, repairs that were done oftentimes to things like drive shafts by guys doing four by and way out in the woods. And they use just a set of jumper cables and uh, car batteries to do the repair. Now, I know everything on the internet must be true, but let's verify this. I'm curious if it actually even works. I've got three batteries over here that I'm going to use. We're going to start with 12 volts, and we'll see if we can weld this stuff together. I'm using some... 7018 stick and we're just going to use some cheap jumper cables i've got a few different sets here of different quality and we'll see if we can get these two chunks of steel stuck together before we get started to give ourselves the best chance of success i've clamped this guy down to the bench cleaned off the paint off of this clamped them together so we've got a good clean surface to work with i've cleaned off some area here for a ground It's a little bit sketch, but what are you going to do? The next thing you have to make sure is that you can actually hold the rod in your jumper cables. They all seem to have like this little tab right here that's preventing them from closing up. So I'm probably going to bend that out of the way. And it looks like somebody did me a favor. On the other side, these uh, have already been bent, so they don't clamp, uh, they don't, you know, come together properly. But that's good because now I've got this opening here. You can see somebody's already messed these up and they're bent, so I can get this in here. All right, we're going to start with 12 volt, but before we hook it up to the battery, make sure this isn't connected to anything. All right, let's give 12 volts a try. Well, it'll give a spark, but it's definitely not giving us enough current to do any welding. Well, it's hooked up 24 volts. Let's talk about the sciency bit of this just real quickly. If we're going to move from one battery to two, there are two ways to hook it up. We can hook it up in parallel, which would be negative to negative, positive to positive. What that will do is it will stay at 12 volts, but it will give us more amperage available from the two batteries. Now, if we look at Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance, our voltage is 12 volts. Our resistance is the rod itself, the welding rod. So then what we're doing is we're just affecting current. So if we hook this up in parallel, so it stays at 12 volts, the amount of current running through the welding rod is going to, say, is going to stay the same. So it's not going to do us any good. We have to hook this up in series. What that's going to do is it's going to add the voltage of the batteries together. So it's going to go from 12 to 24 volts which is going to double the amount of current that is running through that welding rod. So we'll hook this up as a series uh, connection, and then we'll go back and give that a try. All right, so this is now hooked up in series. So basically negative over to positive, and then this positive goes over to the negative of this, and then out there. So basically we've got a loop running through these two batteries. If you think about it like double A batteries, this is the equivalent of putting them end to end, positive to negative. So now we'll have 24 volts over at the electrodes. And in fact, I'm going to grab the meter and we'll prove that out. So this is our cable that runs over to where we're going to weld. 
you can see we've got 25.3 volts. Because this is likely to get pretty warm, I am going to glove up here. I find the weak point so far is the ability to grab on here. So in fact, I think I'm going to go grab the uh, pliers and adjust this right now. All right, let's try with 24 volts. Make sure we've got exposed metal here. You need to make sure that you're, basically I'm pulling apart the clamp here so that it grabs real tight here. What it was happening was I was seeing a lot of arcing up here and nothing down here. So that rod is getting really, really hot. I mean, it's hot enough that it's bending the rod. The rod is also appears to have welded itself. Oh yeah. It's welded itself to the teeth here. So you can see we are getting an arc down there. It's not super hot and it's difficult to, to get it to start without shorting out. I'm going to take this thing off the bench. We're going to go clean some of this flux off and we'll take a look at the weld. We're close to being able to weld here. Eh, I don't know what kind of penetration we have, but whatever. We're going to clean it up, take a look, and then I'll probably add in that third battery so we can go to 36 volts and we'll give it a try again. You can see that's really ugly. We may have gotten some penetration up here, maybe in here. I mean, you can see there's a heat affected zone. Maybe a little bit there. So we started to weld. I'm going to take this clamp off and we'll see if those things come apart very easily. Well, it's at least good enough to hold it from gravity. That's a little surprising. Let's take it over to the vise and try to pull it. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised. I mean, it wasn't great. But we started to put some heat into it. I guess if you're broke down way up in the uh, backwoods, if you've got nothing else, maybe. I suspect if we try this with 36 volts though, this is going to uh, improve things a lot. So let's wire that up, clean this piece up. Actually we'll clean both pieces up so we've got a clean interface and uh, we'll try it again. Probably worth mentioning this looks like it's what, probably 8th inch mild steel. It's actually just a chunk of old bed frame. All right. We've added in this third battery. So let's check the voltage between here and here, which will be our electrodes for welding. 37.8, so almost 38 volts. So now we've got three times the current that we initially had available. It'll be interesting to see if it welds or if it just uh, slags that stick. If we can strike an arc and keep it going without sticking the electrode, eh, it should probably work. Most stick welders have a safety feature so that when it's at a dead short, it doesn't keep pumping through current. Here, we don't have that. So if it's a dead short, it's going to keep running current, and that's why that electrode gets, you know, melty hot. All right, I hit this with the grinder, took it back to, you know, some clean metal, so we're not trying to burn through the flux in the old weld. Let's give it a try. To give ourselves at least an opportunity for it to work, let's expose the electrode here. Just kidding. It would help if I hooked it up at the battery.
That's definitely cranking out some heat. Let's get this cleaned up and see what it looks like in there. Right now it looks really ugly. It's welded the clamp to the piece. So that's kind of fun. Well, it is not pretty. You can see it's stuck to the clamp here, but it looks like we've got penetration. I'm going to cut this off of here so that we can actually put it into the vise again and do kind of that bend test and see what we've got going on. All right, let's take a look. I cleaned it up with the wire wheel. Got some pretty good porosity going there, but that might just be paint and ugliness that's going on there. Certainly got penetration. Again, it's ugly, but it'd probably get you back to civilization. Let's put it in the vise here and see if we can pull it apart. Oh yeah, that is definitely welded together. So you can see there was paint here. And that's probably what caused all that porosity. But let's face it, if you're in the backwoods, you probably don't have everything you need to do a nice job cleaning things up anyway. I don't know. Not too bad. So I'd say the... So I would... I'd say the net result here is, if you're out in the woods, and uh, you are going to be doing things where you might break down, I would definitely bring enough jumper cables and some welding rod in case you need to do a repair. It's going to require at least three batteries. One battery doesn't have enough energy to weld anything together. Two, you might be able to stick some thinner stuff together, but the current that was coming out just really wasn't very good. Three, you definitely get enough current. So, Sometimes what you see on the internet is true. Obviously, there are some conditions that are required in order for it to happen, but you can do it. You set of jumper cables and a you know piece of stick, you can stick metal together. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.